What up, dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So I have a bit of a sore throat today, so if I sound kind of weird, that's why. But we got the Dante buffs and Neja buffs and other things buffs hot fix today on all platforms. We're going to be going over each change, and hopefully it's good. So let's get right into it. Before we do, make sure you sub this channel. We do daily Warframe video uploads. I might be live tonight. For a little bit of a shorter stream with some drops on the channel, Archon Shard, Void Plume Pinions, etc., etc., testing out these changes to Dante and Neja. Uh, but if I am not, I'll definitely be live like on Friday because we have a double credit weekend coming up. And these Chrono Buffs might actually be kind of nice there. All right, so let's get right into it. We got update 35.5.6. And there's quite a few changes on here, actually. Uh, but we knew about most of them if you watched all my videos. All right, so they're addressing uh, Archetitron, Neja, Divine Spears, and uh, Dante's Dark Verse and Page Flight. Basically, over-nerfed, and they're going to buff them up. So let's go over the first Dante changes. So they've made uh, the Dark Verse line of sight, so the, the slice ability of Dante, also his helmet ability. New build video tomorrow. Uh, it's be more in line with Tragedy. I don't even, I didn't even think this had line of sight, but apparently it did. Uh, and I've tested it out. It does seem to be pretty reliably hitting enemies now. And it does go through walls a lot of the time, too. So, um, I think that's intended. Hopefully it is intended, because that's a big part of the build I'm using tomorrow. Uh, yeah, Dark Verse, Line of Sight been fixed. Now, here's an actual number buff here for, like, as far as damage. Return the status damage increase applied to enemies hit by the Paradigm. So, like, basically the birds. So, let's go ahead and show what that happens. So, it's, it, it's currently 50% status damage, uh, and it will scale with Power Strength. So, on my Dante build I showed, like... A week or two ago. Uh, but I have changed some of the stuff on that build since then. I've changed the Archon shards to be three casting speeds. So, no more power strength shards on Dante. Uh, but as far as the build from last week, uh, as far as changes, we got Precision Intensify on here instead of Umbral Intensify. Or, sorry, Archon Intensify because they changed it to not proc from his, uh, his two all the time. But as far as what got buffed here, the birds. So, the birds now have a 50% status damage increase. And with this build, 172% status damage increase. So if you're using like a... This is usually the Akikor from the previous uh, video. That's going to be really good. We got a Zylock right now. Let's see if it gets any Slash procs. But yeah, that'll be pretty good for increasing the status damage on enemies. All right, so the way you summon the birds is you do... I think it's Dark Light. Yeah, Dark then Light, and you summon the birds. So now they're, they're attacking these enemies. These enemies are more vulnerable to status. Okay, so a pr pretty decent slash proc from one bullet. I'd say that's pretty good. Pretty good. Now, of course, you can use, like, you can hit them with the birds, then use, like, Dark Burst to make them take more status damage from that slash proc. That's going to be pretty nasty, so. Um, yeah, it looks like Dante is still good. I don't think they uh, they ruined him at any point here. Well, I actually didn't get to play him when they added the first line of sight things. So, yeah, the birds are massively buffed, so that's really good. Like, honestly, Dante is going to be a status debuffer kid. He already kind of was, but now he... He definitely is. And just alone, with abilities alone. Like, you could already kill level 10,000 Thrax with his abilities. Now it's easier than ever. But that's just Dark Versus right there, killing level 225 uh, Steel Pack. So, yeah. Alright, so that's really good. Honestly, that's a really, that's an underrated buff right there, because those birds are really powerful. They also make the enemies more vulnerable to status chance as well, so lots and lots of procs on them. So great buff there. It was an undocumented, unintended element of page flight that was released, and they decided to remove it, but they broke their promise of not nerfing his damage when they did that, so they're returning it. So yeah, big buff to Dante. Hooray! Dante's really good. Tragedy. Because of the ner uh, the return of page flight status damage increase, we have added a 1 billion damage cap to Tragedy, purely as a prevention preventative measure against some, some error codes. Okay, so that, that's understandable. You can only do 1 billion damage with Tragedy now. Uh, just letting you know, no enemy in this game can survive 1 billion damage anyway, so it's okay. It's totally fine. So that's great. Um, we, that's just to make sure your game doesn't crash. You do like, you know, 300 billion damage because you slash proc them so much. So that's that's a thing. The only, the only major buff here is really the page flight buff. This is just a line of sight change. This is just a, you know, don't glitch the game out change. Let's move on to Overgar interactions with Vex Armor, Rage, Hunter Adrenaline. So my fears were correct, actually. Kalervo is not getting any of this. Neither is Rhino. I forgot Rhino even got Overguard now. But yeah, Rhino and Kalervo are not going to be affected by this, uh, technically. All right. We've changed how Overguard interacts with the effects that benefit from receiving damage on Warframes to make it a co -op, more co-op-friendly experience. 
Specifically, Vex Armor from Chroma, Rage Hunter Adrenaline mods for your frame. The conversion regarding Dante's abilities with Overguard became a driving factor to look at these interactions to find ways they can make them more beneficial to co-op play. Just to make the missions more harmonious, basically. Okay, so for Chroma, previously Overguard would prevent Chroma from benefiting from his Vex Armor since it blocked damage of Health and Shield. If you didn't know this, Chroma gets his damage buff from basically taking damage. Like, if enemies damage him, they are going to be, you know, buffing Chroma up. So this just changed today. So they, it's actually on the UI right here, too. So, oh, it skills with power strength. Great. Armor boost per melee kill, 60%. Damage boost per range kill, 60%. My maximum damage buff is a, over a 1,000%, so, you know, that's really good. Let's just go ahead and take a quick look at how that's going to work here in the sim. I mean, these guys are going to be... This is a profit taker build, so it's not really meant for these guys. Let's put them, like, level, like, one. Level one. And we'll just blast them away. So I'm going to cast my Vex armor. And I'm going to... Just blast them with the Okris. Look at the top right corner. So I got 600%. I got 700%. I'm max chroma buff from just a couple of Ogre shots. Oh man, what a what a big buff that is. What the heck? That is so much easier, dude. Wow, I've actually start playing Chroma some more. Very nice buff. I was not expecting this to be as big of a deal to me. Wow, very cool. Okay, so we have our 1400% armor buff and our 1000% damage buff. Just from a couple kills. That is a... And the fact that it scales with strength, I don't think it's in the patch notes. That's a really big deal. Yeah, um, by the way, new Prophet Taker Ogres uh, Chroma Guide coming out, like, this week. Because there's a double credit weekend coming up. And it might... If the stars align, it might be a quadra uh, credit weekend. So we'll have to see about that. Okay. Um, great stuff there. So melee damage. So, they, yeah, they don't say here it scales with strength. But it does scale with strength. I usually mod Chroma for a lot of strength. So this is really good. Um, additionally... The perk of self-sufficiency where players have far more control over their buffs instead of having to rely on unpredictable of damage. Dude, this is a huge chroma buff. I didn't realize how big of a buff this would be. Awesome. Yeah, that's really nice. Okay, Rage Hunter Adrenaline. So this is the one that I thought would affect Kalervo, but does not affect Kalervo. They specifically said it does not affect Kalervo or Rhino right here. But there's still a, there's a frost buff in here, so it's, it's okay. Previously, Overguard granted by allies could prevent uh, you getting energy from these mods, Rage Hunter Adrenaline. Now Rage Hunter Adrenaline will convert damage on Overguard by allies to energy while shields are inactive. So basically, um, so while shields are inactive. So if you are like on Nidus or Inara, it's basically just for Nidus and Inaros right here. Uh, more specifically, they will trigger when the last source of Overguard originates from an ally, including spawn allies such as Spectres. This allows shieldless warframes like Inaros and Nidus to regenerate energy via these mods that would be previously blocked by Overguard from allies. So this is a situation where this buff will even affect you. You have someone on your team that gave you Overguard, and you are Nidus or Anaros. That is the only situation you will actually see this in. Or if you ever get like another frame that has no shields. So here's the exact details. Rage will give you 40% of the uh, damage dealt to Overguard uh, from allies, when, when an ally grants Overguard to you, uh, to, to, uh, to energy, so while shields are inactive. And same thing with Hunter Adrenaline, same exact thing, just Hunter Adrenaline is stronger uh, as far as the damage number it gives, or the energy number it gives you. Note, Warframes that grant themselves Overguard, like Kalervo and Rhino, will not be able to trigger Rage Hunter Adrenaline from their own Overguard. Only Overguard granted by allies is eligible for this. So keep keep Nourish on Kalervo, basically. The same, the same is going for the uh, Necromech Rage and Kinetic Diversion for Arcwing. So if you have Overguard in your, your mech or your Arcwing for some reason, there you go. And we got a Frost buff right here. Frost Icy Avalanche Augment will now grant Overguard to non-player allies. So, like, Sentinels, Companions, and Spectres. So, that's really, that's nice. I, it didn't do that before. So, now on Frost, you will give your, you know, your cat Overguard. It didn't do that before. Dante did do that, by the way. Dante did, uh, does give Overguard to Companions. Now, Frost will also do that. So, nice little Frost buff snuck in there. Line of Sight Improvement. So, we got every ability they've, they've so far, they're changing the Line of Sight on to be better. And they're, in the words, better. And we've also got something that will be happening in the future, too. So, they've made it where the Line of Sight is now going to be uh, well, well, let's explain it right here. The first type of check sees if you, if any part of the enemy is on the screen. So any part of the enemy, big or small, is considered visible or eligible to pass the line of sight check. The second type of check is if enemies are not on the screen, we check for the line of sight of the enemy's head, torso, and feet instead of only their body, which will increase reliability there as well. For abilities that hit in a full circle around you, we check both both checks are used. Once to evaluate enemies that you can see, and then a second sweep to check targets to the sides that aren't visible. Okay, so here's the abilities they have changed in this update. 
I'm not going to go and show you every single one of the sim, but I'm going to read them off to you at least. Excalibur's Radial Blind has a rendered check. Excalibur's Umbra's Radial Howl has the same kind of rendered check. Dante's Dark Verse, rendered check. So, yeah, I do have a new video involving Dante's Dark Verse tomorrow, and I have already tested it a little bit. It feels pretty good still. I think it did get a little bit, like, the, the LOS feels a little bit weird, but uh, maybe it's just I'm not used to it yet, because it was different yesterday. But yeah, uh, they did change Dante's Dark Verse LOS. We already read about that. Helmet's Sickening Pulse, the helmet ability that, like, gives extra heat procs, whatever it does. Rendered check. Ildren's Pillage has some changed LOS, so hopefully that's going to be more reliable hitting every enemy in the area. Mag's Pull, used in, like, endo farming and stuff. With Greedy Pull, rendered check. Maybe, does, does that LOS check apply to Endo as well? <laughs> Hopefully. Nova's Null Star. Uh, unfortunately, that's probably not going to be getting used much anymore after tomorrow's video, but yeah, rendered check on Nova's Null Star. And Hildren's Aegis Storm, the ulti of, of Hildren. Now we got Raycast from the floor where Hildren is standing, is hovering. Okay, so if you actually use Hildren's 4, there you go. Korra's Whip Claw. This one's. I'm gonna test this one. Maybe make a new Korra video if it's actually good. Uh, Korra Whip Claw getting another LOS check. Thank you very much. Been wanting this one for a while. Corvex's Chirinka Pillar. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me know how much you. How about this? If you got this far, the video, how much do you actually play Corvex? I feel like Corvex has not has got to be one of the least popular frames. He's. Like, I've already forgotten about Corvex at this point. Uh, and you know. Yeah, he, he, he exists, but we've already moved on to, like, Dante, so... Corvex is, like, in the dust. And, honestly, the Goth is more memorable than Corvex to me. Okay, the changes are also tangible fixes to FOV, preventing LOS checks for, like, all those abilities. So there's more planned in the future, though. More LOS check improvements in the future for Ember's Fire Blast, Gyre's Rotor Swell, I think that's the ulti of Gyre, Vauban's Tesla Bank Augment, Tesla Nervos, okay... And then Zephyr's Tail Bomb or Tailwind Dive Bomb. So these have not been changed, but they are they are in the in the tube to be changed soon. Okay, uh, if you remember any of them that are not good, you can report uh, more of them to the uh, Hot Fix up. Uh, you can basically report them as a bug. I'm assuming as written above, we are not done improving LOS. Uh, new reports related to LOS will be in investigated for future Hot Fixes and updates. Okay, cool. cool. Now here's a here's a buff right here. Nejaz Divine Spears. Divine Retribution Augment. So Nezha was betrayed, uh, they're, but they're going to see what let's do, see what they did. So they've reduced it, so it will reduce the base range of 50, but it says that they, they've made it where the base range of the ability is 14 with the Augment equipped. Okay, so we have the Augment equipped. I'm going to look at it. How much range, how much range is it going to be? 39 meters. Okay, so it went from, what was it, 26 meters? So you got another 13 meter radius from the, the nerf revert, basically. So... About a 40, almost a 40 meter radius with the Vine Spears. Exact same build as the, the video on it. Uh, I don't have any shards, unfortunately. But let's go ahead and see. Let's go ahead and see how far this range is going to feel. Okay, so we'll summon it. Let's make them level 100 and whatever again. Okay, so um, I'm going to put a waypoint on these enemies. Let's put like this guy. Alright, we're going to go way back here. So they said 39 meters. Let's go like 40 meters and just see. Okay, so yeah, it didn't hit all the way up back there. I, I think this ability does not have LOS, so that's good. But it is a uh, bigger range now. Having, having no Archon shards on Neja feels pretty rough with no casting speed, but... There you go, they did buff it up. It's got more range than the other day. It has 39, about 40 meters of maximum range if, with every single, yeah, literally every single mod in the game for range. So, that's probably worth using again, I guess. They didn't actually say the exact number they wanted to reduce it by, but yeah, they made the base range the ability. Um, yeah, base range reduced to 14 meters. That's a lot better. It, to put it in perspective, it was reduced to like 9.5, I think, before with the previous nerf. So you got another 5 meters of base range that scales off of range mods. So Neja, I think Neja has been saved by this one. Thank you, Pablo, uh, for saving Neja. All right, very good stuff there. Let's move on to the next change. Arca Titron's Slam Capacity Trait Changes. Now, I don't have any clips of the Arca Titron before the patch to go over here, um, but here's what they've changed with the Arca Titron. And also, let's, let's discuss what's going on here, too. Arca Titron was an outlier for the Slam Damage rework in Dante Unbound. It's its unique trait allowed for ludicrous damage numbers. We aim to change its damage output to a more reasonable level. 
but as a result made the weapon too underpowered. That's very transparent of you. To address this, we've made the following changes to the Archetitron based on the community feedback we've received after the adjustments we made in the buff to the, uh, in the buff slam damage last week. Reduce the max charges from 10 to 5. We want to make it easier for players to achieve the max charges they can benefit from the slam damage and range increases more often. We've also adjusted the slam damage and range per charge to accommodate for the charges of max rank. Increase the slam damage increase per charge to 250, was 100, for a total of 1,250% slam damage, so it used to be 1,000. Increase the slam range from per charge for 2 meters, was 1 meter, to a total of 10 meters, same as before. So the slam range is the same as before, like pre-nerf. The damage is technically higher, but remember, they changed the math on the damage too, so it's not it's not the same as before, but it's it's they, they buffed it up a little bit. Fix the slam capacitor's guaranteed electric proc not occurring. So yeah, they this was not this was it was very glitched and they fixed that up. I'm not going to use the Archetitron right now, but I might have to make a video on it pretty soon since they you know actually buffed it here. Deep Archimedean fixes. Uh, okay, they they've done some fixes here. So they they did fix trading, not being able to trade mods properly. That's been fixed. Um, fixed warframe ability with cycled missing stats for their. Uh, stuff on the arsenal screen. So this was very annoying. I, I realized it last night. You could not see your Wismote's fire rate buff in the arsenal screen, no matter what you did. So that has been fixed. I hope. Let's let's go see. So okay, so all yeah, all the Wismotes are back here. Good. Ivara's stuff was there, but yeah, some of these were not here, and Wismotes are back. So that's good. Uh, even though Dante is replacing Wis for a lot of people. So it looks like lots of good general fixes here. The, yeah, overall, guys, they did. I think they fixed up Neja enough that's worth using again. Archetitron, I'll have to test it out myself to see if I'm liking it or not. Uh, Dante got a big buff on the damage department. Chroma got a big buff too. And for people that play Nidus and Anaros with Hunter Adrenaline with a Dante in their squad, your specific thing has been fixed. Uh, so yeah, really good stuff here. Now, um, yeah, he, da, now Dante does still have line of sight in his abilities. I mean, that is that is definitely the case. But they've, they've been fixing it up. They decided it was it had to be, even though it was not properly, you know, decided on before this stuff came out. But hey, you know what? You can't go back in time and make it where they didn't release the update maybe a little bit too quickly. So, hope you guys found this video fun and helpful. Um, yeah, Dante is good. I will probably be live tonight. My throat does kind of hurt, so maybe not. But yeah, I'll definitely be live on Friday with some prop ticker farming. If you need some prop ticker help, I am down to help with that too. And yeah, well, we get uh, lots and lots of credit. So let's hope we get a quadra credit weekend because of the uh, because of the thermia fractures. That would be really funny for prop taker. It would be like trade bans all over the place, honestly. So see you guys in the next video. Hope you find it fun and helpful. And take it easy. Peace.